Good morning, everyone. Today we are going to perform the practical on sending the data from the system to the cloud. For this, we'll be using a LabVIEW. LabVIEW can be installed through the link shared with all of you on your system. Once you have installed the LabVIEW, you will, you will see this icon on your system. Just double click on it to open it. Now LabVIEW helps you to make your uh, virtual instruments and through this you can visualize how the system will be working actually. It also gives you the power of integrating the hardware with the system or values from the system can be sent to the cloud or taken from the cloud. So the objective of today's practical is only limited to sending the data from the system to the cloud. For that, go to the file. Press on new VI, you get the two windows. The first window that you see is a front panel and press control E to go to the other window, which is the block diagram. So we will be, uh, what we will be seeing at the front end will be there on the front panel and the block diagram or the connections will be there on the block diagram window. So before we start with the uploading the data on cloud, what we will do is we'll first make a simple system where we'll be reading the heart rate and taking a decision whether it is low, medium or high. So what we do is for uh, taking the heart rate as an input, just right click, go to numeric and take a vertical slide and we name it as heart rate. Now we know the heart rate can be minimum is 70, when it, for a normal person is 72, we just make it as 150. So as we change the maximum accordingly, it will change. We have an option of making it broader for the ease of changing the values. We can have a digital reader by going to right click, going to visible elements, I, visible items and place. So this will give us the reading. Now what we want is a display in the form of an LED, whether it is low, medium or high. So it's a Boolean. So what I do is go to the Boolean, select an LED. It is for say low. Then again, select another LED for normal and another LED for high. Okay, so we have three cases. When my heart rate is below say 30, I'll say it's low from 30 to say 100, I'll say it as normal. Beyond 100, I will say it as high. Okay, so I just go press control E and I go back to my window of block diagram. Now what I have to do is I have to take the decision based on heart rate. The element or the structure that helps us to take the decisions or give the output as per the different condition is the case. So just right click, go to the structures and select the case. I'll just arrange it. Okay, and the this is what is a case selector. So for me, the case selector is depending on the heart rate. So I just connect it. Since it's numeric, accordingly, it will give me some default value. I can just change it. So it is from some value, any value to say 30, what it is. I have to give the output as low. So I just connect. Now the next case we know is um, from 31, since we have taken 30 as condition. So to avoid overlaps, we need to have different set of values and I set it as default. Then we can add another case. Presently it is two cases. I'll just go, I'll just go right click here and say add a case and beyond 100. One, I make it as high. 
Now for each condition, we have to see what will be my output. So taking the first condition, what I do is, now for this condition, we know low is true and the others are false. So what we will do is just right click inside. Right click here and create. Yeah, right click here and create a Boolean true constant and connect it with the. Now I'll go to 101, it's only high is true. So I'll just go to the Boolean, make it true. And then for 31 to 100, we know normal is only true. We go to the Boolean, true constant. So, but when we are making this, what do we see is a, still there is a error in the circuit. That means the circuit is not complete. So what we have to do is, when this normal is true, the other are false. So what we will do is again, select Boolean, true constant and click on it and make it false. Similarly for high, we have to do this. Click on it and make false. Same changes we have to do it for the other cases. Right click and create a constant. So it takes it automatically. Again, right click, create a constant, false. Then we have to go to 31, 200. We have already done. We have to go below 30. Just right click, create a constant. Here also, right click, create a constant. So now can you see that break has been removed and it can be run. So I just go to front panel. So right now, since it's zero, it's in low. I just increase it. Now it has become normal. I make it greater than high. So the circuit is working perfectly. And now the next task is upload this data on the uh, cloud. The cloud that we'll be using is a ThinkSpeak. Type ThinkSpeak. and open the ThinkSpeak website. You need to create your sign-in. Uh, so I have created my login and you sign in. You can make your new channel. Uh, what I'll do is, so you can create your new channel, go to new channel, give it the name first then it is for uploading data on cloud. Okay. Uh, the field that I'm uploading is a heart rate. And if I have multiple sensor data, I can activate the other field and I'll just say save channel. Okay, so my channel is created and you can see. Now in this, what is important and that we'll be using is the API key. API gives, keys gives us the keys which will give us an access to the cloud and help us to write the data on the cloud. So two things we'll be using is either an API key when we are using a dynamic information or a fixed, this gives us a fixed API key with a field. Presently you see, the, so what we will do is just go to API keys, and presently, to make it simple, go to the right channel and copy this. Control C and go back to my lab view window. Now to help us uh, write this data on the cloud, what we need is, 
file says stop run. What we need is a data communication. So right click, go to the data communication protocols. In this, go to HTTP client and pin this. And then you can select open handle, get handle, and close handle. And you can just close it. You can connect the input to the output. Now it has to put the data where, write the data where on the URL. So what we'll do is that has to be our input. So I just right click, go to the string and take the string control. So it is the URL. And I paste my whole field that API that I have taken. I go back to my block diagram. This is my URL. We have to simply connect this URL here and we have to run it and see what is happening. So I just run it. I go back to my cloud and see, do I get some data here? Yes, you see the data zero. Right now the time is 11.27. Now, can I change this data or how can I change this data? I told you the field data is zero. Let me go and make it as five. And let's go back to our, so it's taking the readings. Let's wait and see whether it is making it five or not. Can you see it has gone to five? I'll try it again and make it. And go back. Can you see? Hello. So we could so we can see that as we are changing, we are able to upload the date. But the problem here is what we are writing is going on. But what we want is whatever is my data, heart rate, that should be good. For that, we have to make our data dynamic and this won't help us. So what we do is instead of using the full URL, we'll be using only the API key and replace this URL by API key. That is the right API key could be of any channel. So I'll just go and place it here. Now, how do we form the URL? We have to form the URL. So I'll just delete this. Okay. Now to form the URL, we need two operations. One is a string concatenation and string to format string format into a string. Now what we have to concatenate this, this will have two parts. One will be the fixed part and the other will be the dynamic part. For that, I'll be just taking two constants. And for here also, I'll be creating the two constant. Okay, now what I'll put in this constant is the fixed part of the URL. So what is the fixed part of my URL? It is HTTP thingspeak.com till the slash. I just copy it and come back and paste it here. And the dynamic part is from update. I just copy it and paste. But what I have to make dynamic is this 
API key, which is a string. So I just put percentage is and also the data. So I just put it as percentage point to F. That means it will be a decimal taking the values to two places after decimal. Now, after this, what I have to do is, this is what is the format which I, in which I want the data. Now, what is the first part that I have to put is the API key. So I just connect it. Now, the second part is the data. What is the data? It's a heart rate. Just slightly pull it and connect this part with the heart rate. So what it does is in the first string, it puts the API in the data, it puts the heart rate. And now we have got the URL, the way we had it. And now I'll put it to the I connect the URL to the get string. Now let's run it and see. So presently it's 132. Uh, I'll go and check the channel. Can you see the data is 132.04, whatever was my heart rate, not the data that I'm feeding. Now I made it 98.80. It has to go slightly below 100. Can you see? I'll make it more uh, 50 around value so that it's more visible, 59. Now I've changed the value, let's see. See, you, have, you are able to upload the data dynamically. So this is the experiment that you have to complete. It's a very simple experiment that can be easily done and any data that you have it on the lab view can be uploaded. We will later on see how to take this data from the hardware and upload it on the cloud. Thank you.